Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and it's time to talk about the MoJam. The MoJam went down a couple of weekends ago, and uh, no, it is not a monster truck event, so uh, even though you might expect to turn on the television and hear it promoted with an ad that sounds something like this, Sunday, 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 it's the humble MoJam, coming to the War Memorial Auditorium. All your favorites will be there. Kids seats are just five bucks. It's the 60-hour game jam, the likes of which the world has never seen. Be Be there. It was in reality a 60-hour game jam put on by the Humble Bundle folks and headlined by Mojang, the makers, of course, of Minecraft. Features three games, Catacomb Snatch, which was made by Mojang, and that will be our first game we're going to look at today. It also featured Broadside Express from Wolffire. Those are the guys who actually run the Humble Bundle. They're also working on the game Overgrowth. And finally, it features Fists of Resistance, which is from OxEye, and these are the guys working on the game Cobalt, which will be published by Mojang later this year. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need to say about the Mojam. So let's get right to it. We're going to start out with the most polished game of the three, and that is Mojang's Catacomb Snatch. So here we go. We are going to get into this thing. This is definitely the most polished game. It's the reason that I wanted to do it first so that you could kind of see the high watermark and then we could sort of uh, go down from there. So uh, it is ancient uh, Egypt. You are Lord Lard or some such thing. You have a, uh, a gun and a pith helmet and you are adventuring through the catacombs attempting to snatch the water of life or some such thing. Uh, You'll see me kind of jump around in this video. I'll give you some different looks at different things. Uh, But we are going to start out with just getting a basic feel for the game. This is pretty much what you do. It's it's essentially a a shooter in in nature, uh, even though you are walking around as a little man. And the controls are a little wonky. Uh, You have to face the direction you want to shoot and then start shooting. Uh, You cannot, once you are shooting, change your direction. So it does allow you to do some strafing, which is very nice, but at the same time, you are limited in how quickly you can respond when you see a threat coming. You kind of have to, what I did right there, you back off and then start again. So the game is uh, very, uh, very in-depth, actually, for what they had to do. I mean, there was a lot of people working on this game versus the other two, so uh, that would explain that. You have a little shop down here. You're collecting money, of course, the whole time. And you can purchase three things, a gun, a coin collector, and a bomb. You will never see me purchase a coin collector because the game has a glitch in it where if a coin collector is destroyed, it'll actually crash the game. Uh, There has since been an update, uh, an unofficial update, because the source code was released along with the game. And basically Mojang said, hey, if you want to fix anything, any errors you find, any bugs you find, uh, or if something just doesn't work right, or if someone wants to take this and do something completely different with it, uh, go ahead. Here it is. Uh, Knock yourselves out. And someone has indeed made uh, Uber Catacomb Snatch. His name escapes me, but I will give you a link uh, to the Uber Catacomb Snatch uh, website slash download in the uh, description below. Uber Catacomb Snatch corrects the errors with uh, with the coin collector. Without the coin collector, it is a little bit tedious to collect money. Uh, essentially, you can drop the coin collector in a, uh, a central location near your turrets, and your turrets will kill a lot of stuff, and the coins will drop, the collector will suck it in, you come along every so often and empty out the collector by picking it up uh, and putting it back down. Super cool, works out nice, but Uh, I don't want to have to manage the coin collector and and concentrate on it versus the actual uh, playing of the game. And uh, you'll see me kind of start to get overwhelmed here for a second and almost die. Like, ah, ah, I'm going to die. Your health does regenerate. That's cool. You can see your statistics down at the bottom. Um, I haven't really tapped into this game too much. Uh, I I do... uh, I do think that there's uh, there's several hours of fun in this game, so, you know, a couple hours of challenge, and uh, once you've perfected it, playing around with the actual method, with the way that you uh, you get to the end of the game, quote unquote. Uh, essentially, you're trying to build this track out and get to the center of the map where there is a fountain which contains I don't know what. Uh, it's the fountain of youth. It contains gold press latinum. I'm not sure, but it's where you want to be. 
So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get enough coin in order to actually uh, get to a point where we can get the train track extended and defended by turrets and get ourselves to the center of the map. So we'll go ahead and pop ahead and we'll look at something uh, a little bit further towards the end of the game. And uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. So here you can see I've extended my track most of the way. I mean, I'm pretty much all the way in, and I'm escorting this little uh, thing, this little contraption, this little robot man. And uh, you'll see that he's going to collect some of the precious water from the fountain in the center and uh, transport it back. And that's pretty much what you have to do. You have to get that and protect that dude as he continues to collect. Now, there's a camp on the other side of the map, on the north side. And I'm not really sure if I need to extend my track all the way up there. I mean, as I said, it's a little bit fuzzy on the actual dynamics of the game. I mean, I kind of get the point of what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not exactly sure of the finer points, so to speak. So this is pretty much what Catacomb Snatch has to offer, and I do like saying the name Catacomb Snatch. I'm not sure why, but it just rolls off of my tongue very nicely, and that probably could be considered a sexual innuendo there, but it was completely unintentional. So... <laughs> Uh, we're going to move on to the next game. The, the, the last thing, the parting thought on Catacomb Snatch is most certainly, uh, as I said, this is the most polished game. This game is uh, not too far off from a release, I would say. A little bit of polish, remove those glaring uh, issues like the bug when a collector is destroyed. Throw this game up for five bucks on Steam with Mojang's name on it, and people would probably buy this game. The art assets are really nice. The coding seems solid enough. Uh, fix those little bugs, of course. And uh, the actual aesthetics of the game are wonderful. You know, the, the setting, uh, the style of gameplay, everything works pretty well. All right, let's move on. And up next, we have the Broadside Express. This is the contribution from Wolf Fire Games. They're the guys who run the Humble Bundle, Jeffrey Rosen in particular. And they're also working on Overgrowth, which is a uh, game in which you play a ninja rabbit. And it looks really, really promising. In this case, they are making a steampunk train simulator set in the desert. Uh-huh. Uh, the name the Broadside Express in uh, indeed points to your method of destruction. In this case, you are shooting people with cannons that are on the broad side of your train. You also want to, for whatever reason, attempt to pick up the other train cars. I guess maybe you're trying to get them to town or whatever, but I've never been able to figure out exactly what I should do with the cars once I have them. Uh, am I just trying to survive? Am I trying to find all the cars? I, I don't really know. Uh, so you've got the fire spewing scorpions to deal with and the other trains that want to also grab the train cars. So it's a very interesting idea that they've put forth here. You're sort of, a, I, I guess you're a freelance train engineer with your badass steampunk train and uh, you're cruising the wastelands of the desert and trying to get as many train cars attached to you as you can. I'm, again, a little bit, uh, a little bit foggy on the, on the concept, but uh, they do a pretty decent job of pulling it off. You can see this is the only game to attempt uh, 3D graphics, and uh, I think they came out looking pretty good. They're using the Unity engine here, which is uh, used in a lot of web-based applications. A lot of the uh, bigger games. Uh, I know Battle, uh, Battlestar Galactica Online uses the Unity engine. Lots of games use the Unity engine because it does put out really, really good results in a web format. So you can see my train going down there. I die. Pretty much when you die, you just start over again. There's no real complexity to this game. You get a few seconds of title screen, and then it jumps right into it, and uh, you are engineering your train, I, I guess. Is that the term for driving a train, engineering it? I don't know. So this is pretty much all I need to show you of this game. This is 100% of what I was able to, to uh, get out of this game. Get your train cars, drive your trains, defend your train, and uh, that's it. I never found out where to take the train cars, if there was some depot to drop them off at, whatever. But uh, in the end, I enjoyed the game, and uh, it was definitely worth the, uh, it was worth the charity donation that I made, most certainly. I mean... Game Jams, this is what you're going to get. I mean, these guys work on the games for an extended period of time, and then when it's over, it's over, and uh, that is it. So you're not going to get uh, absolute cream of the crop products, but this is pretty damn good. You know, nice looking. They did a lot with the uh, graphics. The controls feel tight. All in all, I have to give Wolffire a big thumbs up. So as I go ahead and make my third attempt at doing whatever it is I'm supposed to do in this game, 
I will go ahead and let you guys go. We'll head into the next game, and uh, I will see you in just a moment. And last but not least, we have Fists of Resistance. This is the contribution from OxEye, and as I've said before, OxEye is the company that is making Cobalt, and Cobalt will be the first third-party game that Mojang publishes sometime later this year. Now, Cobalt is a 2D game, a 2D platform adventure fight game, and this is an isometric view dungeon crawl beat-em-up style game. So. These guys are a bit out of their comfort zone. I don't know how experienced they are as developers, but it definitely kind of shows that this isn't something that they do all the time. Uh, it's a little bit of an odd game. Uh, it has an interesting sense of humor. Uh, you play as this army man who has been captured, and he has been experimented upon, and he's left in the basement of this uh, Nazi base, and he must escape. And how do we escape? Well, we escape by beating up Nazis that look somewhat like Captain Jean-Luc Picard, if I'm... Am I stretching there? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a bit of Jean-Luc there. Uh, but anyhow, they are Nazis, and we're going to beat them up. We're going to take their Nazi gold, which of course has been, has been gotten in some nefarious manner. Nazis don't get their gold honestly. And uh, one thing you'll notice, you'll hear it when this enemy dies. Yes, the enemies fart when you kill them, and the game actually tracks that as a stat on your final screen. Uh, yeah. So I've got this key here. I'm looking for uh, the hole to put it in. And uh, that's something that I tend to do quite often. There it is right there. Found the place to put it. And uh, yeah. Moving on. This is pretty much what this game is. It is uh, moving forward, fighting Nazis, smashing them with freaking crates. Awesome. The crates all contain money. Uh, the tan crates. You will see some green crates later on. Those contain very, very fun explosives. Probably the best thing about this game uh, are the explosives, so you'll get to see those eventually. Uh, I love that they just went whole hog with the design. Uh, just Nazi uh, swastikas everywhere. Uh, these odd little red bits of, of carpet or floor tile or whatever it is. But, uh, you know, you can tell that these guys are kind of struggling, uh, I think, with their concept. Oh, here's a green box. Very, very good. Uh, but this game still plays well. It's it's a fun little distraction. It it's definitely not as polished as Catacomb Snatch, and it it definitely has that um, jagged sort of feel that uh, Broadside Express uh, didn't have by being in the Unity engine and being a little bit 3D. Uh, you know, Broadside Express kind of had that uh, feeling of even if this isn't a complete game, it looks like more of a game. So I'm gonna toss this into the room here. Uh, and watch this thing freaking explode. I'm going to back off a little bit because it's a big explosion. Oh, just totally annihilated those guys in that room. So uh, that's my favorite thing about this game. I mean, hands down, the explosives are amazing. Uh, they really, really do a ton of damage. I'm going to grab this other green crate so I can get even more. The only problem I would have to say is that you can't take them with you. You can only carry one at a time. And... Um, then you got to come back and grab another. So that's not very fun. But, um, you know, all in all, this game is is good. It's a good jam game, basically. This game shows the effort uh, that these guys were taking this seriously. It shows that they, they definitely were uh, having fun and trying. I can't believe I missed that guy with that. Uh, you know, they were trying to put out something interesting, and it shows. It, it really shows. Damn. Damn. Uh, I do like that all the levels are procedurally generated, so if you do kind of get a hang, the hang of the controls, uh, it's not going to be a, a repetitious game. You're always going to come into something slightly different, and you're always going to have a pretty decent time. There are uh, there are things to do here. You know, this is the this is the one game that I would say uh, feels like it could be polished into something uh, very nice. I mean, Catacomb Snatch is kind of got the polish that it needs to almost be a game. I mean, certainly it could be a iPhone game or an Android game or whatever, but uh, this game in particular uh, feels like it could definitely be made into something more with some time, add some items, an inventory system, stuff like that. I think they could really do something with this basic concept. Of course, they are in development on Cobalt, so they have no desire whatsoever to do it. Now, the game uses true isometric controls, which is my least favorite way to control an isometric game. Uh, what I mean by that is 
If you press the up key, your character moves to the upper left of the screen. If you press the down key, he moves to the lower right of the screen. If you press the right key, he moves to the upper right of the screen. And if you press the left key, he moves to the lower left of the screen. So the controls are actually oriented in the perspective of your of your character. They're, they're oriented in the perspective of your actual gameplay, your game area. So I, I really don't like those. I would much prefer... If I press left, my guy walks to the left side of my screen. If I press right, the guy walks to the right side of my screen. Then I can orient myself better, uh, and, and I can play the game more effectively. With it set up like this, doesn't really work, uh, in my opinion. It, it doesn't really work intuitively. You can learn the controls, but I don't want to have to learn the controls. I don't want to have to learn to, to play. can't believe, again, I'm missing with the crates. Uh, but that's my only real complaint with the game. Other than that, a little bit of a glitch there is a dance jig. Uh, but other than that, it's a solid. It's a solid game for a game jam. No real complaints. Um, I'm I'm really satisfied with all three games from the jam. And and in fact, um, let's go ahead and close this video up. Uh, I do have to say that uh, I am very impressed, uh, time and time again, by Notch and Mojang, uh, that they do seem to. I mean, the dude seems to be a decent guy, and that is something that you. You love. You love it when someone that seems nice succeeds. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you had the stuff with the Yogg's cast and who was what and did he have too much to drink and who was the asshole in that situation. I don't really care because, frankly, he's a stand-up dude and he's proven himself time and time again to be a stand-up dude, whether it's offering to fund Psychonauts 2 or putting on an event like this or just continuing to support Minecraft. I mean, these, they're still developing Minecraft. I mean, I gotta give them a big thumbs up. All right, guys. Well, uh, this is gonna do it. We are gonna go ahead and head off as I give you the humble Mojam logo to send us away on. And uh, yeah, I hope you purchased the humble uh, bundle, the humble Mojam bundle or whatever the hell they called it. And... Um, yeah, I hope you've had some fun playing the games. I hope you've had fun watching me play the games if you didn't purchase it. Always keep your eyes on the Humble Bundle site, the Indie Royale site. All of these bundle sites, they tend to throw out things left and right. You never know when it's coming, and if you are a gamer who likes to have cheap games at your fingertips, it's the sort of thing that you want to keep an eye out for. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.